Okay, 2024, what a year. I wonder at the end of 24, how do you feel about progress linked to climate change, climate action or decarbonisation this year? With news about record temperatures, um, not much to celebrate at international climate negotiations and the decisions of our dear friends across the pond, it's easy to feel a little bit despondent about all things climate change. We aren't moving fast enough, we aren't doing enough, and there isn't enough urgency. But that doesn't mean that we aren't making progress. It doesn't mean that the ship is not turning slowly to head in the right direction. There are still things that we can celebrate as the year comes to an end. So I'm gonna to try to. And in this video, I'm gonna zoom in on four things about climate action in the UK that means that we can celebrate some progress in 2024. Okay, number one, I want to celebrate the news about the electricity system in the UK. At the start of December, I started spotting this graph being showed on, being shared on social media. It was published by the Financial Times and it outlines the share of electricity, electricity generated uh, from different sources in the UK. So from renewables, which is wind, solar and hydropower, from fossil fuels, uh, from nuclear power and from biomass. And this graph suggests that for the first time this year, renewables generated more than fossil fuels. The source of this data was the energy think tank Ember, who published data about electricity generation in the UK and further afield. So in the UK, Ember suggests that the share of electricity from renewables this year will be around 37%. Uh, and we'll have used 13% less gas to generate electricity than the year before, which is great news. It says that fossil fuels in general will generate around 35% of our electricity this year. And we should note that this year saw the end of coal power generation in the UK. A big step in the right direction in reducing emissions here in the UK. And in the next couple of years, things will only get better. With 3.8 gigawatts of wind capacity to come online from offshore sites in 2025 and 2026. But Surrey isn't limited to the UK. In their Global Electricity Review of 2024, they look into trends in generation and demand globally and regionally. Uh, the UK story is one to celebrate, but maybe the global story is just as good. So highlights from that report from Ember. 30% of total global electricity was generated by renewables in 2024, up from 19% in 2000. They think that last year, 2023, may well have been the peak emissions for the power sector. They say that solar generation grew by 23%, wind by 10%. They say that fossil fuel generation grew by less than 1%. So I wonder if, that, if next year that could be negative. They say that global power CO2 intensity dropped to 480 grams per kilowatt hour compared to around 200 in the UK. But that means that on average around the world, an average electric vehicle would be 60% lower emissions to run than an average passenger car, a fossil fuel passenger car. And then with climate sceptics often using another country and their emissions to say that we should not make changes, aka China, Ember says that 37% of global solar and wind generation was in China. So there's a long way still to go, but there's lots to celebrate in how we in the UK and in the world in general are shifting away from electricity generation from fossil fuels towards clean sources of electricity. The second thing I want to celebrate is around the sale of electric vehicles in the UK. So the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, uh, SMMT, shares data monthly on the proportion of vehicles sold in the UK. And this lets us track some of the transition away from fossil fuels on our roads. So in November this year, the share of pure battery electric vehicles, the cleanest ones that you can buy, was over a quarter of all sales at 25.1%. Plug-in hybrids and petrol hybrids, uh, which are positive, added another 23%, but overall we're still a little bit less than petrol diesel vehicles, but the trend is strong. So the year to date in 2024 shows that 18.7% of new cars are bought were fully electric, up from 16.3% in 2023. And so this year, up to the end of November, almost 340,000 new EVs were on the road, up 18% from last year, and with petrol and diesel sales down 3% and 12.5% each. This is good news. 
I know EVs are imperfect, they're too expensive, they're resource intensive to make, uh, they keep cities congested, but in terms of CO2 uh, and air quality, fewer fossil fuels on the roads is a good thing. And more EVs on the road uh, today means that there'll be more second-hand EVs available tomorrow. Our next car will be an electric vehicle and there'll be news on that soon. And I suggest that many of us could switch to more affordable second-hand models in the next year, in the next couple of years. And because of the renewable electricity progress that we've already talked about in this video, electric vehicles will continue to get cleaner and cleaner uh, to drive to, uh, and to, to get around. And they will form a key part of our energy system, offering storage and flexibility of electricity demand. So ZapMap, a really interesting resource uh, in the UK, suggests that the number of EVs on UK roads is now over 1.3 million. This is good news. You can breathe cleaner air in cities. You can hear the quietest streets around, around where we live. And you can see the smiles on EV drivers' faces. Maybe that's exaggerating things a little bit. Okay, my third story that I'd like to celebrate is, despite the opposition in lots of media, the number of heat pumps installed in the UK is still going up. So the Micro Generation Certification Scheme, which is a body that registers renewable installations in the UK, has a data dashboard that gives information on registered heat pump installations. So far in 2024, um, looking at data in the middle of December, we can see that the, the MCS has 52,293 registrations of heat pumps, and that's compared to around 37,700 in 2023, a nearly 40% increase year on year. This is good news. And we should say that MCS doesn't count the number of installations that are not part of those uh, that MCS scheme, which does include uh, heat pumps installed as part of new builds. So the number will actually be significantly higher. And overall, this means that since 2010, there have been nearly two, 240,000 MCS registered installations. And the trend is upward. And if there are 240,000 homes with heat pumps today, uh, and there will be more because not all of them were MCS registered, this is nearly 1% of the, the number of UK homes with gas boilers. So obviously there's still a long way to go. And we should know that homes with heat pumps are still early adopters. So the more that we can share uh, experiences of living with a heat pump and, and best practice of how to run a heat pump, the better for the 99% that need to remove gas boilers as soon as possible. But what's the impact of those 52,000 uh, heat pumps in installed this year? If we assumed that they've displaced 12,000 kilowatt hours of gas, so the average uh, UK home might use 12,000 kilowatt hours of gas. And if we assume they had a COP of three uh, and used 4,000 kilowatt hours of extra electricity, their installations would have reduced emissions in the UK by 72,000 tonnes of CO2. So heat pumps installed this year, 72,000 tonnes of CO2. That's the equivalent of the of, of an average fossil fuel passenger vehicle, the one I mentioned earlier, uh, driving around the world 7,200 times. This is good news. This is a, CO, a real CO2 reduction. And as those renewables that we've already talked about keep on generating, those heat pumps that we've installed will get cleaner and cleaner. Anecdotally, I think you can see here on YouTube, I think you can see in lots of the media, and in conversations that I have regularly, uh, person to person, that the interest in heat pumps is getting stronger and stronger. So maybe 2025, we'll see even bigger numbers. Although let's just be clear, if 50,000 installs per year was our ceiling, it would take 500 years to replace all the fossil fuel boilers in the UK. We obviously need to accelerate. And finally, my fourth bit of good news, uh, my fourth good news story, I wanted to do four because there's something nice about four stories for 2024, but I actually found it fairly hard to think through. Partly because those three areas, power, travel, and heat, are my key focuses in, in how we need to respond to climate change in the UK. The fourth priori priority area could be diet or farming or land use or biodiversity, but I haven't really seen much that has stood out in terms of good news story. Maybe I've missed something. Um, so if if you've seen a good news story about that kind of world that we might find encouraging, please do drop them, all those news stories, in the comments below. Instead of trying to force a story about land use uh, to be a good story here, I'm actually going to head back to transport. 
because one of the things that is sometimes said to me when we talk about electric vehicles is there isn't enough charging, the infrastructure isn't there. So my fourth and final story to celebrate uh, for 2024 is that there are more public charging points uh, installed in the UK in 2024 than any year before. And we haven't even got to the end of the year yet. So stats from ZapMap, one of the really great resources that we can use around electric vehicles, suggest that, that, that this year nearly 19,000 charge points have been installed in the UK, up from 16,500 last year, including 4,000 rapid or ultra rapid chargers, those ones that will fill up a, a car quickly at a service station, for example, rather than those ones that take hours and hours to charge when you're parked up. And this increase in charges means that overall there are nearly 75,000 charging stations across the UK. If you can't find one, I think increasingly is the, the issue is that you're not looking rather than that they don't exist. If you look at the map on ZapMap, it's charges cover almost the whole of the UK. Okay, that's it for today. Four reasons to be cheerful when thinking about climate action in 2024. There is clearly so much more to do, but there's also lots to celebrate. Before the new year, I'm going to be pulling together a video of the five things that we can do to make a difference to climate change in 2025. So if you think that that might be interesting to you or helpful to you, do hit the subscribe button uh, so you can see that when it comes out.